Good evening. You're watching Cult of Contempt. <laughs> Some people say fuck the environment. He says fuck you. Don't die over spilled garbage. Toys. Books. Tapes and DVDs. Antiquities. Oddities. An embalmed horse. All at amazing prices. Necropolis. Serving up everything from superheroes to the obscure. 59 Passaic Street, Garfield, New Jersey. Don't forget to visit the haunted basement for some spooky deals. Necropolis. 59 Passaic Street, Garfield, New Jersey. Patronize, if you dare. Hey, I'm Billy from Billy's Midway Arcade in Hawthorne, and this is a really cool arcade full of old classic arcade games, video games, pinball machines, air hockey, shuffle bowling. Keep them all running for your enjoyment. Hey Paul, it's Brad Sever. I was just calling to wish you a happy belated birthday and hope your dreams of kneeling down with a mouthful of lit candles in the center of a room while 50 guys took turns blowing them out and frosting your face like a birthday cake and a surprise birth bukkake party happened for you. Hope it was a good one, man. Later. Hey guys, I, I always follow your podcast and you said to go to Billy's Midway Arcade and I went there. And I got a, and I got four tickets, and I put them in Oprah's mouth. But I didn't see you guys doing the raffle. I thought you were doing the raffle tonight for the monster basket. Just wondering what's happening with that. Thanks. Bye bye. Hey, you fucking cucks! You know who this is? This is fucking Club Soda Joe. This is the call of contempt! <laughs> and we got a we got another call that uh, didn't actually make it into the intro. Man, this call thing is pure genius. This was all Paul Mauled on this part. Thanks, bud. He was just like, I got this number. I was like, whose number is that? He's like, it's my business line. It's on all my business cards. <laughs> <laughs> so any of my old contacts that call me are gonna get that. <laughs> what does your business card say? <laughs> Paul the Living Dead. <laughs> Here, here, wait, I'm going to play this call. Hello? Hello? Do I have a pizzle? Yeah, yeah. Guys, Guys, just, just open, open the hatch. The hatch. <laughs> I, I, by my count, it's been nine days. I'm under the ship. Open the hatch. <laughs> but Jim, how do you open a hat? Yeah, how do I open? Where's the hat? I don't know. Do we ever have a hat? <laughs> Is he saying hat or hatch? hatch. Like Richard hatch. 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 Richard Hatch. Like Richard Hatch <laughs> from Survivor. We're gonna open him up. We're gonna make an autopsy on a living person. Gosh. Yes, <laughs> we're going to autopsy Richard Hatch. We'll murder slash autopsy Richard Hatch. <laughs> yeah, we got some good calls on the uh, on the the caller thing. I, I need to like promote this more. Actually, I put it on social media. I gotta start pumping it out there more again. I want to meet this uh, this Club Soda Joe guy. Club Soda this Joe. Guy sounds uh, interesting. Hey, you fucking cocks! <laughs> this is Club Soda Joe. I, I can never you. remember his name. No, I wish it was. <laughs> Dude, and I thought it was my friend. I I said that to my friend after he sent me a, a birthday message, or he sent me one right after, and he, I figured I'm like, yeah, he's in Long Island. It's probably right. fucking. One of his, like, fucking choochy Long Island friends. <laughs> right. So I was like, hey, man, that guy was really funny. He's like, what guy? 
<laughs> Club Soda Joe, he threatened us on the podcast. He's like, I don't know who the fuck you're talking about. I have no idea. He goes, I didn't give that number to anybody. He's like, I forgot that you sent it to me until just now. Who is the mysterious, mysterious Club Soda Joe? Do you know? Call our hotline. Nine seven three five three one seven four four eight. Wow, uh, our operator is standing by. Yeah, I told you, it's on my business card, Phil. <laughs> I never did any business with that. <laughs> I got one birthday message from uh, my friend Ray, uh, Ray Powers, and <clears throat> it's like, oh man, that's probably the, the phone number I talked to him on like eight years ago. You know, like that's the last one he has. He's still calling it. Yeah. Wondering where you are. <laughs> Yeah, I have like me voice messages from, uh, this is a good one right here. Wait, wait, before you start this, what was the whole thing with the candles? And there's a lot of homoerotic imagery oh, there. Oh, that was from You're on your knees with all the cocks or buddy. candles in your mouth. Uh, and, that's from one of my, uh, my, my pals, uh, Brad Sever. He's a nice, nice young man. Congratulations on all the discomfort you gave us. For yeah, that seconds. was very discomforting. Funny, but discomforting. It was, it was both funny it and discomforting. It wasn't discomforting. <laughs> it was funny. That's good humor. <laughs> all over your mouth and ass and genitalia. Uh, no, here I got a good, I got a good voicemail right here. Let's hear. What picture are you okay? Um, I see that the signal's not great. That's from my mom. Paul's got it's mom. really old. I have so many messages in here. It's like a treasure <laughs> trove. Of uh, I could just teach an AI to speak like these people. I just create like digital clones <laughs> with my mom. I wish I could do that to call me out of school. But then I remember I don't go to school anymore. It's like a time capsule of sound. It's like you're taking the amber with the insect in it, and then you're gonna take them out and make more amorphous sounds with it. Hey, Paul, this is Ronnie Skull. Oh, please. <laughs> Yeah, I got a bunch of those. It's great. You should hey, definitely do that something with that. Hey, Paul, this is Roddy Skull. So you're telling me you can make Roddy say whatever you want? No, not whatever I want. Oh, uh, okay. We, I played with uh, the Accelerators and um, the Church of Mad Love. Church of Mad and, Love. And uh, Evil Annie and the Ants this weekend. Wow, how was, was that? That was uh, a pretty good time, I would say. It was, it was Lenny who <laughs> plays the the drums yeah. for the accelerator's birthday and um, we partied and we laughed and we cried and I met a, a guy he kind of reminded me of if Paul Heyman do you know who that is the name is familiar he's like in wrestling he's like he ran ECW and he's like Brock Lesnar's now like manager and he's really loud and just okay. a very animated New York, Philadelphia business guy. Okay. And right. <laughs> he was a combination of him and the fucking Asian guy from Gremlins 2 that just takes all the pictures all the time. Like, oh, I can work any camera. <laughs> and he's some Mr. fucking... Stereotype. He's some shithead that just, like, wanders the scene, I guess. I don't know what he does. He videotapes bands. Okay. And then, like... I don't know. I heard that he tries to sell them the tape for five hundred dollars. Oh God! Right before oh. I went on stage. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh, that guy. So this guy. The high pressure. You know sale. what I'm talking about? Yeah, I know what you're talking about. So yeah. he's fucking. Does he sound like Gilbert Godfrey? No, he makes he's, some sounds. He's got kind of that. He's got Godfrey desk. He comes yeah, in. Yeah. Let me tell you something. I'm sitting at the bar with Bob. We're bullshitting. This guy walks in and. A fucking, he's dressed like a, kind of like, um, I don't know, khaki pants and like a shirt that's like tucked in, but like not tucked in all the way. So it's all like baggy. Like he just looks like a fucking, like a vagabond and like a trench coat on. And he's like, oh, oh, Ron got me, got me fucking lost. Oh, I, I don't have a cell phone. Who the fuck is this guy? Where did he come from? Did he just, like, spawn outside the ball of energy like the fucking Terminator? Did he just send back the worst person from the future that like, we don't want him anymore? Fucking asshole. So, he walks in and he's, he goes, hey, could you refill me? And he hands Bob a fucking jug. And Bob, like, fills it with cranberry juice. Like, what the fuck? Who the fuck is this guy? So, 
Don't then, script that. Oh, then he's just fucking like, he just won't shut the fuck up about being lost. Oh god, I hate that. Yeah, it's like, dude, you have no fucking reason. You have, you could have every access to a GPS in the world. Right, it's exactly. not an expensive thing. Like, I see your camera there. That's so stupid. Yeah, what an asshole. He so, wants attention. Yeah, and he just, he was so fucking annoying. So then I'm on stage, I'm on stage finding out this, like, oh yeah, that guy, he tried to charge, a, you know, the band $500 for this. So, I'm on stage, I'm playing songs, I'm getting, like, a pretty, like, a good reaction, but that guy's, like, talking to somebody, and he's so fucking loud, so I kind of just let it get quiet for a second, and he's talking, right, 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 right. And I go, uh, hey, what are you doing there? Are you gonna sell that guy the tape for $500? <laughs> I, I just start talking shit to the guy, but he's so oblivious because he's not paying attention. <laughs> everyone else in the room is laughing at me. Uh, that Mary Beth posted. Awesome. And it's fucking gold. I think it's on the Paul Mall page, too. Nice. And it's just fucking gold. Like, I'm just kind of sassing this guy. You hear people laughing at me. Uh, yeah, that guy was a real fucking pain in the ass. He was the best part of the night. For just because I got to terrorize him, and he had no Good. clue. Comic relief. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. Good, I don't know who that guy is. I don't know his name. Um, I just call him Camera Shithead. <laughs> nice. I think that's like sufficient description of him. CSH, Camera Shithead. I like it. Yes. The CSH. CSH. That works. Oh, by the way, uh, uh, we got a guest this evening. The great. Santos. Oh, thank you. Yes. I don't think we introduced him before. I said he's. I said we're here with Santos. Yeah. Oh, you I didn't? think I did. All right. Sorry, I introduced twice. I'm very important no, right now. No, I'm taking it back. Saying, ah, we're here with nobody ah, okay. because right. you introduced him. Now you're nobody. <laughs> I think you didn't introduce him. <laughs> I'm the boy. Maybe you don't see it. Maybe you should fucking listen. Yeah, maybe I should. I got the ADD. My mind was wandering. The ad ad. The ad ad. Yeah. You know who got in trouble today? Who? You know who Jim Coronet is? I've heard of Jim Cornette. Yes, I, I, I read this. Yes. Who's okay. Jim Cornette? Jim Cornette is a uh, classic, like, he used to run Mid-South Wrestling. He worked for okay. WWF. He's like a, he's like a Southerner. <laughs> and like very, he's an he's, announcer, right? He's an announcer. He's okay. a manager. He smacks people with a tennis racket. Okay. That was like his thing. And uh, his like, the tennis his like motto is, thank you, fuck you, goodbye. And like he just don't give he kind of don't give a fuck. But he's like one of those guys that's like super. Everything he posts on Twitter is always like super left wing. I was like, oh, okay, whatever. Really? I never, yeah, I was. Okay. I was kind of like, all right, whatever. I I never really knew where Jim Cornette stood, but he is fucking pretty left wing. Maybe he sees himself as an actor. Well, no, he's he was a promoter. Okay. And what he used to do in the South mm -hmm. is fucking have these dudes. The gangsters. Okay. Um, New Jack and Mustafa. They were just these two fucking hood black dudes. Wow. And they would come out and be like, I posted the actually. I can play. I'll play the promo that they do. It's fucking. It's great. Cause it would never fly today. It's so super offensive in today's okay. fucking pussified world. When, when was this? When was he big? New Jack. We're talking the 80s, the 90s? This was, I believe, the 90s. That's fucking good wrestling. That is good wrestling. Like, that's intense. I love Sure. 
You just never see something like that. That's been terrible. But that yeah, was fucking yeah. what Jim Cornette, like, that was his wrestling product. Is like, super fucking edgy. In your face. Like, definitely, like, playing to the fucking racial hatred that Southerners had. I think it's like, uh, it's a pretty natural fucking, uh, you know, intensity there. There's a natural drama out of that. These dudes, like, he put the fucking, like, the tag belts on him. Like, they were... They, they had, I, as they say in the wrestling business, the rocket on them. Like, they were like Cornette's guys, you know? Mm-hmm. Like, I don't think that Cornette's fucking statement that I'll read in a second, it, he said it during a, a wrestling match. Right. I really have a hard time quantifying that as, like, a, a racist statement. Okay. I feel like it was in poor taste. I'll say it now. <laughs> Trevor Murdoch. He's mad, bad, and dangerous. He's the only man I've ever known that could strap a bucket of fried chicken on his back and ride a motor scooter across Ethiopia. (laughs) Is that a racist statement? No, it's not. I think it's a completely outlandish statement. It is outlandish. It's it's kind of shooting in all directions. Poor taste, but I think it's a famine statement. It is a famine statement. It's like so over the top that it's... And it's also such a dated... Have you heard like people say something like that a million times? Like that fucking thing, yeah. I'll strap a thing to yeah. the back and go through a place that where people are impoverished. Yeah. Like it doesn't it could be anywhere. But like people are bugging out over that. And I'm thinking I'm like, that's not the worst thing that's ever happened oh God, no. in, in like wrestling or entertainment. It's like a guy playing a he's supposed to be the bad commentator. Like you're not supposed to fucking Right agree with what he says. Right. But the fact that people are freaking out, he, like, lost his job. It's like, ah, whatever, Billy Corgan was his boss. Dickhead. I mean, the only guy, I mean, who's gonna replace him? It's just gonna be the same bullshit. But, uh, I mean, that's not, I think a lot of this talk is kind of a waste of time. Like, you know, it's like, it's like people trying to stick up on other people's behalf, but you're using the lowest amount of energy to actually help anyone. Like, instead of being the fucking thought police... Or well, no, it's... you got to have police. the discussion, though. Why don't you get, like, some scholarships in the inner city or something to actually fucking help people? You know what because I mean? Because that's... You've you got to have the discussion of why... Like, I feel people like understand... Why, why people are misunderstanding. Like, yeah. the, it's not a fucking... Like, they... I think by people saying, oh, he's, stra- he's got his fried chicken strapped to his back, right. and Ethiopians are black, I think they're fucking the ones that are co- like m- being racist by like stereotyping yeah. black people as, like, Jim Cornette's Southern. Any food he fucking picks, they're going to call him racist, because he fucking eats the same food as all yeah. the other people yeah. down there. That includes fried chicken, biscuits, all that shit, like, whatever. I don't know what the fuck they eat, but maybe racist, but I think it's just... It's just for promotional purposes, and I think the context is what's really important. I don't there. think it's racist. I think it makes a point. That's the whole thing. It's not a racist comment. What it is is he's saying, look, this guy can drive across a country and solve famine problems with a bucket of chicken on his back. That says something about it's the kind of It's a bad analogy. It's a shit analogy. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Is it the worst thing that anyone's ever said? No. Should a guy lose his job over it? I don't think so. No. Just a heel commentator, that's his job. Just yeah. let him apologize yeah. and move on. Like, in funny. wrestling, Rowdy Roddy Piper painted himself half black. Yeah. <laughs> Triple H had the most racist angle with Booker T ever, where he's like, people like you don't ever wear this belt. Like, it's like pretty fucking... Yeah. He never had to yeah. say what he was saying, but that's what he was saying. It was so fucked up. Yeah. I think the problem with this country is we come from Puritans who really like witch hunts. And so we're just always inventing witch hunts for ourselves oh, every 10 or 20 years. Absolutely. And I think that PC language in the beginning had a good point to it. PC the idea was, was just, just to fucking respect people. That's mm-hmm. all. Just fucking respect people. It's How simple is that? Down. And then it just... Yeah. You just poisoned it, and you just turned it into something else now. And, you know, let's bring it back to center. You know what I mean? The one no. thing that bothers... But there's so many know. fucking witch hunts in the left, and on the right, you've got so all the fucking crazy Christian-ass shit. Yeah. And if you fall outside of that, you're burning in hell. So it's like, why so much fucking extremism in this country? Can everybody just chill out? Why always... What annoys the shit out of me is the fact that political correctness has ruined humor. To oh, so such an extent. You know what I think of when I think of political correct TV? I think of Friends. 
Something like that. I'll where, be there uh, for you. Just soulless, exactly. Artless, nothing. Drivel. Yeah, exactly. There's no derivatives of nothing. Yeah. Just, just baseless right. nothing. Yeah. Seinfeld no intellectual was, fiber Seinfeld. whatsoever. Seinfeld is Seinfeld is good. That was they bent the rules a little bit. It they was clever. Correct. Exactly. Was it real fucking deep art? No, but it no, was clever. Was it? No, I think George Carlin was a fucking philosopher of our time. He like, was, yeah, absolutely. I mean, that guy worked on fucking humor, man. Yeah, yeah. You know, and I think he there's a lot of people. craft constantly too. But I think that, uh, yeah, we got we got to chill out a little bit in this country. I don't know how that's going to happen. I think part of the problem is is that we had a frontier for a long time. So if you didn't get along in this fucking society, you just marched out in the middle of nowhere and built your own place. And now there's no frontier left, and it's just a bunch of weirdos staring. These assholes couldn't march anywhere and build shit anywhere. <laughs> no, they're they're anywhere. a bunch of fucking babies. What about the, uh, the lumbersexuals, those guys? <laughs> lumbersexuals? What's that? <laughs> yeah, what's that? Those, please explain this. Friend of mine with glee. A friend of mine termed the guys who wear the uh, plaid shirts with mm -hmm. the beards, yeah. with the boots and the jeans tucked yeah. in. He referred to them as um, lumbersexuals. Lumbersexuals. Because they look like lumberjacks, and then they're all the same. It's a type of a you know, it's oh, a type of sect of. So there's a whole lumberjack movement going on out there. I'm not aware. There's a lot of it. Yeah, Isn't that like how swing dancing sprang up in the nineties. Oh, Jesus, it sounds that? more like a cumberjack. <laughs> <laughs> it's like going to your cumber butt. The only thing is go to Jersey City and walk around the streets. You'll see them. <laughs> and the thing is, they had they're absolutely they have no abilities to fix anything. I don't think they can even change a tire. That's another thing. That. Hipsters aren't new. You know that, right? In the nineties, we called them art fags, or in the eighties, I 50s think. Fifties was. Beatniks. How dare you? Yeah. How dare you? <laughs> Are you triggered? <laughs> <laughs> I, I I hated that crap. I still hate it. I, I run across I run across things like that. Yeah. And I just laugh right at them. A friend of mine and I we did a song at a coffee house. It was called "I'm No Art Fag." <laughs> uh, that's. That's yeah. reprehensible. It is reprehensible. There's you a guys are song. reprobates. Yeah. What else? You're using yeah. such. Faggoty language. <laughs> well, that's from with all the sad. No, you know what I had going on up here last night? Uh, hey now. Me. No, it wasn't that. <laughs> <laughs> I heard some shit dick upstairs start beating a drum <laughs> once in a while. I it's know, okay. Man. Man. <laughs> it's oh, okay. No. Uh, you know what? Whatever. There's like, if you're if you're allowed to time I don't give a fuck. Really, mm -hmm. you know? but like, these assholes are up there, and. They had, I I went outside to see how fucking loud this is. I'm like, I can't be the only one here. Okay, all so right. So I went in the fucking, in the lobby. It was right upstairs from me. It was louder. Oh my God. Louder in the lobby. So I'm like, fuck, that's crazy. I went outside. I look up. I'm like, they got the fucking, uh, they got a, a balcony open. Okay. And the fucking, like a red light on and it's like a bunch of guys, there's like a tambourine guy, two acoustic guitar oh guys, God. and they're all fucking yelling with the, uh, with the finesse of like a fucking drunk rugby team. Uh, it's like, oh, this is horrible. And they're playing like uh, uh, Pink Floyd. Oh. <laughs> and just like that song, uh, uh, what is it, that fucking, I think it's Annie Lennox. Uh, I can't even remember what horrible song it is. I think I finally forgot. Um, but they, they were just playing oh, God. Kind of screeching into the night oh screeching they were like an emo band it was like the oh. worst thing ever uh but but boy was I like amused I'm like uh, at least I know like I don't sound like that wow you know that's yeah, scary that's true yeah. I'm glad I don't sound incompetent yeah sometimes I read other people's awful writing and I'm like wow okay but I can't wait. I can't wait because this is like all metalheads that live in this building. Like, I would just want one of them to fucking run into that guy. Yeah, like none of us would give a shit if that band upstairs sounded like Venom, <laughs> and they were just like, <laughs> you know, like whatever. Fucking, we. I would just be all in. If they sounded like Metallica up there, and be like, whatever. They could play fucking all day, all right? Like, right? I'm, I'm good with that. Yeah, free tunes. Yeah. But they just sound like assholes. Oh. That's the worst. You know what? They all they all have the same songs. They'll have like Pink Floyd's "Wish You Were Here," 
They'll yeah. do the Four Non Blonde song that uh, Marvel. They'll do Kumbaya. That's, that's the one. Uh, yeah, that's yeah, that's what. Like they weren't playing Kumbaya, but they did play. What's that Four Non Blonde song? Oh, what's going on? Hey. Uh, yeah, what song uh, or something? Yeah. Definitely playing. I hate that fucking song. Oh, I heard I so many it. awful bands play that song. And, oh, the covers are even oh, horrible. Yeah, I'll say hey, what's going that, on? You've always got that one audience member who comes up to sing the female lead on that. Like I was in a band, we had someone come. She's always in the, always there in the audience. Uh, there's always some hole that just has to come <laughs> on stage, just ruin everything. I'm on stage. Oh, yeah, yeah, I'm God, here we go. I'm gonna fuck with the guys. I, I, I tried trying around. Like it's hard, but it didn't happen. It was just. The one who actually sang that song had quite a range. You really got yeah, to yeah, yeah. pull that off. Yeah, right. Right. <laughs> yeah, she's known as a lyricist now. She's written for a lot. She's written a song right for a lot of uh, musicians. Mm -hmm. Like some a lot of famous musicians. I forgot her name. That's Linda something, I think. Probably. Oh, okay. Yeah. I, one more thing about PC culture. You know, if you ever want to come up to me and talk about it, you know, I have worked for nonprofits in the inner city. And I did have a student shot in the face in gang warfare, and mm. had pregnant students and all of that. Them to save New Jersey as part of uh, youth build, and I did go to Africa and help people in developing countries. So <laughs> that's so. Nice. I should have said that. During his <laughs> I do I, shit. People. I defended people's civil rights for ten years, asshole. And you got jaded. <laughs> I started <laughs> smoking cigarettes and wearing leather jackets and talking about how the system sucks, man. Yeah, the system is failing, bro. <laughs> I helped that my daughter's iced tea stand. Wow, that's a new thing. <laughs> was it illegal? I was thinking it was illegal. <laughs> I'm calling. I'm calling the governor. Yeah, right right now. <laughs> Call the governor. Call Rudy Giuliani. Oh my god. Oh wow. Giuliani's got enough on his plate right governor now. Governor Giuliani, he's always my governor. He's never heard of that. I thought he was going to be out on the bars. I was a big fan of Corzine. Remember when he crashed that car? He just drive it like the 18. <laughs> he broke both his legs. Yeah, what an asshole. <laughs> For the first couple of weeks. Oh my god. He was like slow, like I worked robot. there for that, yeah, and then like Governor robot. Cody came in, and he was just like Stone Cold Steve Austin. He just yeah, didn't give he is. <laughs> No, we're not doing this. Just shut it down. Fuck it. <laughs> Fuck them. All of them. It's Cody, right? He was just like Don Rickles. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, he was great. <laughs> and that was after fucking uh, McGreevy yeah. coming out. It's like. I was in uh, Seattle. Oh my know. god, this is happening now. I couldn't believe yeah. it. I was blown away. I yeah. I wasn't shocked. <laughs> I'm a gay American, isn't that what he said? Yes. Mm -hmm. I'm a gay American. Yep. And what's he doing now? He's I think he's a priest. Oh, yeah, he's a priest. Isn't he doing something with drug addiction as well? Yeah, I think he is. Something like that. <clears throat> Hey, more power shit, to more us. people should be doing shit with drug addiction. I think it's pretty fucking cool. <laughs> And there's Paul throwing his hat in the political ring. <laughs> yeah, no, my grandmother's really trying to get me to run for the Board of Education. You should. And I told her. You should. Well, she's <laughs> stay on the Board of Education, and she's really trying to get me to run. She's like, you still thinking about running for the Board of Education? She asked me, I, went, I took her out for a dinner on Sunday for my birthday. And uh, she goes, you still thinking about running for the Board of Education? And I said, yeah, I was thinking about my tagline. The monster you created, because I went through the school system. And she just kind of looked at me with, with like a curious but abject horror. Uh, uh, so I love all of that. You should definitely you, do that. You should, yes, you should. I just think about how yeah, great running for Board of Ed would be for the podcast. Yeah, but I have yeah. to use my real name. I don't think I can so. use my fake name. <laughs> The world would know my real name. Oh my god. It would, the mystique would be ruined. <laughs> <the fucking Rude. laughs> mystique. For good cause to be a member of the Board of Ed, you may have to uh, make the sacrifice. Well, no, you know what? Well, be great. Listen, I think I would be awesome on the Board of Ed because I went through those schools and a lot of the teachers that are there, I remember them. I know who's fucking slacking mm -hmm. and I'm coming for them. You know? They're not, they have tenure. Fuck their tenure. <laughs> I'm on the board of Ed. You know what I call it now? The board of dead, okay? There's a new I'm going to go back to all the living dead name when I run for board of Ed. 
taking guys out in classrooms. Yeah, come to my fundraiser at the cemetery. <laughs> <laughs> Where I'm gonna be putting more people. <laughs> no, I think if I did it though, it would be good because I went through that school system and I've thought about it before. I'm like, you know, I think I could help in some way. Like, I don't have kids, thank God, and uh, I'm probably not gonna. But like, <clears throat> I don't know. I see the bullshit. Yeah. I talk to enough people that have, like, kids that are in school in town, and, like, I kind of have, like, a <laughs> finger on the pulse of what's going on. I don't know, I also think it's kind of weird to run for Board of Ed without having a kid in school, but I went through it, and I'm not, I'm not that mm. far gone from it. It's, like, 11 to 12 years, like... It's changed, but I don't think it's changed that much. I'm just oh, picturing in my mind, like, you see the board of ed sitting up there, you got the overweight guy in his fucking That's suit, right. you got the middle-aged soccer mom and her little Bobby nice socks, and then you got Paul Mall fucking sucking down a Marlboro in his <laughs> Batman shirt and his fucking skull-covered fucking pajama pants and his unkept hair, which yeah, made him feel like changing to come down the street for the meeting. <laughs> that would be just, wonderful. That'd be great. What does board yeah. member Mauld say? <laughs> Mr. Undead, what is your vote? Thumbs down, please. <laughs> Side note, I think it would be a great movie where like like a like a punk rock board of ed guy murders teachers who are slacking. No, that would be a great movie. that's bad for my campaign. It's bad. Yeah. You can't be saying that right after I announce I might run. <laughs> That would be like if some if Trump was talking to somebody oh God. and somebody was like, oh, yeah, and then you murdered all these people. He said he would shoot somebody in the middle of fucking New York. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, he's a nut. They didn't give a fuck. Yeah. I was like, what you say? I was reading an interview. You know who Chauncey Hayden is? Mm. He's like the fucking, uh... You know all this man. I've heard of Chauncey Hayden. He's, he's like a... I guess like a reporter. He ran like, mm -hmm. uh... I think it was Massaville or okay. one of those fucking. No, um, what the fuck? Stepping out. Oh, oh, shit. He, oh, that, uh, that Chauncey. Okay, I know what you're talking about now. Yes. That guy ran Stepping Out, and oh, he like interviewed <laughs> Trump like a million times. Like, oh uh, yeah. And there was like times he he was like, he was on uh, Anthony Cumia, and he was talking about how he Trump called him like three o'clock in the morning to like. Dispute some story, basically. One time, oh my God. he's just a sick. Man. And like, it was like years and years ago, but like, I don't know. It's, <laughs> it's just a fucking crazy. He's just a spoiled rich boy. Yeah, but it's <laughs> crazy how long he's been talking about running for president. He planted that seed in the fucking. I thought he was gonna run for president when I was a little kid. Mm -hmm. Like that's, <clears throat> that's how long he's been planting that seed. Yeah, he's an egotistical prayer. Well, I mean, yeah, the, your, the classic Simpsons episode where he does become president. Yeah! There you go. And they recreated some of the scenery from that. Like, they actually did take the picture of them with their hands on the uh, the globe at one point. Oh, yeah, that's I don't, right. Did they do that because of the Simpsons, or did they do that and the Simpsons predicted it? Because I've heard that rumor that Matt Groening is a fucking time traveler. Well, I mean, I don't think that the people involved in that photograph really are that intelligent that they would watch The Simpsons. They, they, yeah, they, they were just, they were probably just following through with whatever was on the agenda. Hey, do this! Okay. Yeah, yeah exactly. exactly. Yeah. Maybe yeah. someone on their team knew the, knew the shot. Speaking of television, but good television, not mm -hmm. The Simpsons okay. anymore. South Park, this season, watch it. Yeah? Really? Fucking amazing. Awesome. Randy gets a weed farm. Uh huh. And him and Towelly are on it. But oh, there's shit. this new thing called the PC Babies, <laughs> mm -hmm. where it's these politically correct babies and nobody's allowed to say anything that's not politically correct because it might offend them. Okay. And they just did an episode about uh, transgender people, like a male to female transgender competing against like biologically born and grown females right. with a vagina. Uh, with a vagina. And they, no. yeah, they, the, the fucking guy they use is like Randy Savage. <laughs> <laughs> That's the guy who just started identifying as a woman two weeks ago. 
<laughs> it's, it's fucking great. This is all jacked and fuck. Ooh, yeah! <laughs> I'm gonna wipe the floor with you! This is crazy. You gotta watch it. This season of South Park is fucking utterly amazing. Wow. I highly, highly, highly recommend it. Wow. I haven't watched uh, an episode of The Simpsons in five years now. It's been a long time for me, but I just remember certain scenes and certain... Simpsons used to be awesome. They used to be great. That used yeah. to be the yeah. show my yeah. parents wouldn't let me watch because Bart Simpson was like disrespectful. That's right. Oh, yeah, I remember that. Yeah. Which is why I watched it. Mm-hmm. Did you care if your kids watch that or South Park? Or... No, I don't care. It didn't bother me. My... What was the show you didn't let your kid watch? <sighs> Barney. <laughs> Teletubbies. <laughs> Teletubbies, I think, was another one. I, I, I didn't care, but my her mother was like, "No, you're not watching this. This is not going to happen." So I think it was Barney and uh, Teletubbies that uh, at a certain point was like, no more. I knew some, uh, I met a couple of people who grew up without being able to watch TV, period. I know Maybe like people, one yeah. show on PBS and stuff like that. Ugh, PBS. Yeah, I know someone who was like that. Hang myself. That's like I'd be on. <laughs> what, did, what were you allowed to watch when you were a kid? Um... I don't know, anything that was, my mom kind of followed the ratings, so if it was like, you know, NC-17, you had to be 17 or whatever, but I would just sneak off and watch shit in my room or like somebody else's house. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, as, as young as I can remember, you know, we got our hands on horror movies. I think I saw a porno by the time I was 10 or 11 years old. Somebody's VHS. older brother or some shit. Yeah, you know, it's Pops like the static. Tape. Pop up the book. Mm -hmm. You're all like, <laughs> But it's the tracking, I can't see the tits. It's like you got gold from Fort Knox and you're never sure when the feds are just about to bust in. Yeah. You got one kid watching the door, I'm everybody's the on edge. Is that a nipple? You don't know. It was an exciting yeah, yeah. time. There was a. Um, when Channel 68 and UHF wound up becoming a, uh, a real cable channel, and it was a cable channel that would show porno. At night, like light porn at night. So the trick was you have to Skin go. Max. Yes, every time you change the channel to that channel for a quick second, it would be not scrambled. So it'll be clear. It'd be clear for a quick second. <laughs> so I think people kept changing the channel. <laughs> this is how desperate guys are, people. <laughs> Pussy, 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 ass. Nature was like, we gotta make sure people are gonna be around. We're gonna make sure. Simulated blowjob, simulated blowjob, simulated blowjob. Guys, we'll do. I remember watching Spice when I was a kid. The Spice Channel. It was like, just like it would just show like a girl going like this. <laughs> but it's like the top of her head. It's like, ah, uh, yeah, you know what happens. And then it shows like the guy grabbing her tits. And then it would like show her like getting fucked, but you saw like nothing. It's like, what is this? What is, is this like a porn for my mom? Like, she doesn't want to see penetration. Oh my god. We got um, dirty magazines. I don't know if somebody stole them from the fucking quick check in Bloomfield on Broad Street or what. But uh, Bobby Capola used to hide him in the bushes in front of some old Bobby lady's house, Capola. just a couple of houses down from his. And then we yeah. also had like like what we called the tree house, but that was like a platform. Mm -hmm. So sometimes we'd look at them in there. It was just like a big secret cabal that we had, you know, before the porn, where you could pretty much see anything at any time. My dad goes to work for a client. He's a house painter. Mm -hmm. Comes home, stack of Playboys about this high. <laughs> <laughs> so me being the guy I am, the kid I was, right. didn't care about the Playboys. Found a National Lampoon. <laughs> the the New Year's issue with Father Time holding a scumbag on it, oh, wow. uh, and I kept that. I had that for years. That's gotta be worth something, actually. I, God, it was held together with duct tape by the time I got uh, through it. Right. But it was it was very fun. Turns off so aggressively with it. <laughs> no, my dad. As if it was pornography. He didn't understand what this was. It was like at my dad's house. I think the first one I ever found. It was like between the magazines in the bathroom. Uh, okay. So I was like, oh my god, is that what what I think it is? You know, and I thumbed through it, and I think he found out that I thumbed through. It. I don't know if I didn't put it back right or whatever. Yeah. So that, that was his mistake. This is how lazy he was. He just turned them around. Like, I wouldn't figure it out. Like, the pages were facing out. 
around now. Like, well, maybe oh. he read it for the articles. Yeah, right. <laughs> you know, Woody Allen being a contributor. I knew it was still in there. No, man. I, I remember going to my uncle's when I was a kid, and that was like the thing. It was like, oh, yeah, I can go to Uncle Jim's and go to the bathroom. <laughs> this was like six, but like, I knew, I knew it was in there. And it wasn't hidden. It was like, it was almost like a basket, and it was like a treasure trove, and it was just like all fucking like playboys and chicks just all naked and fucking. And like, I would go to the like, oh, I gotta go to the bathroom, and I would just be in there. I'd be like six years old, and I'd be in there just fucking centerfold. Like, oh, and uh, and then eventually one day my my aunt was just like banging on the door. I'm like, oh, hold on, and I put the magazine away. And then she came in, and I was sitting on the toilet, and she just took the the whole basket of magazines. I was like, no. And then any time I ever went back, it was gone. Um, and then they got divorced, so there was hope for me. I'm like, ah, oh, cool. Maybe you know, when I go hang out with like former Uncle Jim, he'll uh, he'll have his Playboy. But no, alas, he passed away. Uh, so that was like my favorite fucking uncle. Like he was like the funniest motherfucker. I remember when I was a kid, Mickey Mantle died, and I was like, oh, yeah. you know, America is sad. And my uncle, apparently, for whatever reason, fucking hated him. Uh -huh. And I remember <laughs> the news coming on, and they're like, oh, I'm the baseball legend Mickey Mantle, dead. And my uncle was just like, nice. <laughs> I fucking hated that guy. He's such an asshole. It's just like, and that like fucking shattered my like reactions that you wait a minute you could be happy that someone's dead like, what, did Mickey Mantle rape my uncle like I don't know well Mickey Mantle <coughs> had to get a liver transplant now the, the rumor is is that they knew or something had happened where he had cancer and here's a guy who's got cancer and they gave him a liver so basically they ruined the liver yeah. So a lot of people got really pissed off about that. I don't know if that's what it is or something else. But Mickey Mantle. I don't was, know. My uncle was like a, himself time. Is that it? He he was like a memorabilia collector too. Mm -hmm. So maybe Mickey Mantle was like a dick to him. I don't know. Well, he was not supposed to be a very nice guy. I heard he was a really. I heard he was an asshole. But yeah, huh. you never know. I mean, everyone's different. Depending on the opinion, but I don't know. Pete Rose seemed lonely when I saw him. <laughs> it's Vegas just sitting there. It's like Pete Rose doing a signing, and I just look, it's like <clears throat> fucking Pete Rose sitting at a table, mm -hmm. and no one gives a fuck. <laughs> Man. Well, his name got Burns. I think it's time to put him back, though. Get him, get him. Mm -hmm. and it's time already. They should put Pete Rose in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. That, yes, me? that would be better. Yes, that would be better. They haven't put Link Ray, but I'll settle for, for fucking Pete Rose over Madonna. Or fucking like Whitney Houston. Whoever the fuck they put Run in there. DMC. Yeah, that's stupid. I, you know what? I, I could see Run DMC kind of being. Like, I like him yeah. because of the whole Aerosmith connection. I was say. Yeah, that's true. But NWA or. Probably I don't know, man. I, I think... I, I, <laughs> I don't mind NWA. I don't, I don't either. I fucking... But it's not rock and roll. I, don't, I mean... It, it's not, but it's like... I, it's the fucking spirit of rock and roll. I don't ever think Madonna is the spirit of rock no, and roll. No, absolutely not. No, you're, like, right. Fucking, you're right. You're right about that. That's there's like people that are in there that I'm like... These people don't fucking know what, you know, what it's like to hang... Like, you'd be able to hang with Easy e I don't think For fucking... Sure. Mm -hmm. You know... Plus, rock and roll is about a rebellion, and those motherfuckers would definitely yeah, have like, so, yes. I, I don't see certain certain aspects of the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame as being particularly well, rock and roll. Well, it all comes out of Young Winner's bullshit. But so. that's even fucking certain bands that are like, I would consider them to be like bubblegum bands. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That are in there, you know. Yeah. I mean, yeah, they wrote great songs, whatever. They're timeless. Right. They accomplish way more than I did in my shitty life. Yeah. But, the moments um, and the poppers, yeah. I think, are in there. Yeah. Like, okay, really I like the Mamas and Papas. Don't get me wrong. Do I think they should be in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame? No, I think that should be, like, fucking Motorhead and, like, yeah. bands that, uh, yes. that fucking rock. Acts that fucking rock. Like, yeah. whether it's fucking, you know, I think Ice-T should be in there. Yeah. Fucking Body Count. Right. It's like, the shit, like, I don't know. I think that's awesome. Mm -hmm. Fucking, yeah. He sings yeah. for metal bands, why not? Well, no, yeah. he sings for fucking, he does his own shit, too. That's what I mean. True, it's like, true. his shit is fucking... It's awesome. Like, I, I don't know. There's a lot of people I think should be in there. There's a lot of people I don't think should be in there. It's like still Link Ray's not in there. Like, they, I like um, that they just nominate people. It's like, 
ah, they didn't get in. Fuck them. They're never nominated <laughs> again. <laughs> really? Like, you don't put them back into a pool? It's just like, you just throw the card out? Like, yeah. <laughs> shh, shh, they're gone. Wow. They don't exist. Yeah. I guess yeah. it's supposed to be like, you're supposed to feel good just to be nominated. Well, no, yeah. But the whole fucking thing, the whole point of a Hall of Fame, I always thought, even with wrestling, I'm like, this is stupid. They're nominating guys that are fucking, like, still wrestling. Right. They're nominating bands that still play. It's like, there's so many fucking great bands that shaped rock and roll that aren't playing anymore mm -hmm. that you could nominate. And you get enough people that would be able to show up and, like, put on, like, a, like an homage to them. Right, right. You know? Rather than, you know, I don't want to see the fucking, like, Red Hot Chili Peppers or, like, some band like that. You know. Is you 2 in the Rock and Hall of Fame? I don't, I don't know. I hope, I really hope they're not, because why I'm would they be? not a U2 fan. You know what? To a certain point, after a while, it's just like, guys, you know what? You're releasing all these albums, and they all sound the same. That's, but, that is, like, kind of, like, cancer for... Well, no, so, sometimes it's not. Like, Motor had the same thing. Yeah, but that's different. That's a different thing. They had their thing, and they stuck to it through thick and thin. You 2 they started off as a great punk band, got more... You know, um, Ethereal, when Unforgettable Fire came out, they did, you know, then they did Joshua Tree, then the Zeropa stuff. Uh, then they went backward into their classic sound, but that was 19 years ago. I mean, one of their albums, the album that came out with. Uh, with your uh, with Apple when you had the iPhone up, we had the oh, iPhone God. update. Look, don't remind me yeah. of that. I had to delete that from my yeah. phone. I look at it one way, okay? If you have one great album, you should be nominated. Yeah, get right. in there. That's true. If you have one great album, one oh, great yeah. album, one great album, do for. All right, Red Hot Chili Peppers, <laughs> Blood and Sugar, Sex Magic. That's a great album. You can play it from beginning to end. There's good yeah, music you can play. There. You After have to play that, the first part, but you can play the first four Led Zeppelin albums, start to finish. Word up. They belong in there too. Mm -hmm. You can play the first like four Beatles albums. So, I think so you're saying good. that you need to have four good albums? I think you need to have at least three. Okay. All right, that's a standard. I don't think the fucking darkness will ever be in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, but I think I the Strokes think. will. Truth. Yeah. Truth. That's very true. Yeah. You know, um, like the Hives. Like I, the the fucking high. I don't think the Hives have ever had a bad record. It's like Renee. A hugely influential band? No, but they're fucking great. great like band. truth. Yeah, those are true words. I don't know, man. It's it's all subjective, like that thing. Yeah, too. it's like I'm, kind of just like kissing ass and like who's still alive. And yeah. Fucking, you know, if you're dead, you're pretty much forgotten about unless you have somebody that's like tooting your horn. You know? Yeah. Like, and have you guys been there? Yeah, I, I've been. I've been all of myself. Been all been a couple there. times. It was cool. I saw the Bowie shit. Like all his costumes they had. Him. Um, he was an artist, man. Yes, he was. Then I saw the Bowie exhibit. It was beautiful. It was a okay. wonderful thing in Brooklyn. It was really cool. Oh, in Brooklyn? Yeah. Where in Brooklyn? Uh, Brooklyn Museum. Cool. It was really cool. I've never been out there. I had to check that That's out. That's nice. It's nice. I've been to BAM and I've been to a couple of, you know, Williamsburg and stuff like that. I've seen shows out there. You're mm -hmm. so hip, Phil. <laughs> it's a thing, man. <laughs> Brooklyn is a different thing, but that's happening in Jersey too now. Mm -hmm. You go in the south end of Bloomfield and it's starting to. I went into a little grocery store that doesn't have bags and everything is localized and stuff like that. Well, Bloomfield is trying to be Montclair at this point. They're moving up in the world. Right this now. is this is off uh, Claremont uh, or what is it, Claremont? Claremont. There's um there's a cafe I like called Twenty Two Skidoo. And the building's from 1923, and that's on the south end of Bloomfield now. Interesting. And they've redone the ceilings with the pressed uh, tin, tin, and cool. they have the old furniture cool. and the oh, pictures. Yes, I love pressed tin. <laughs> 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 but yeah, 23 Skidoo, check that place All right. out. I will <laughs> definitely take a look at that. I used to terrorize the owner of a comic book shop who <laughs> had the pristine. <laughs> I would tell him, I'm not here for the comic books, I'm here for the pristine. <laughs> Look at the ceiling. I think her head should get pressed in. Oh my god. Uh, I'm out of control, Santos. Well, is that's that? okay, that's El good. Santos. Yes. Do you have a wrestling mask? You still have a wrestling mask, don't you? Yeah. You know, you have one of those? It's hidden. How come you never started like a wrestling group? I did. We watched the video. No, I mean, right. in the adult life, 
Because I don't have the money to fucking spend four thousand dollars on a ring or the means to move it around from place to place. I need to buy a like a warehouse, and then I'll put a wrestling ring in it, and I'll just have like different. Like I'll have one fighting organization that's just people. But it's basically like porn. <laughs> and then I'll have another one that's like basically people fighting to the death. Another one that's completely staged. It'll just be like Monday, Wednesday, and Friday night shows. It's just be like fucking ancient Rome. Oh yeah. I'm gonna sit in a big throne and just like thumbs up or thumbs down. Let him die. <laughs> well, not for real, no. I know. The Board of Ed's not gonna like that. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I call it? The Board of Head. <laughs> we should pack the Board of Ed. <laughs> yeah, we, should, we should make it the most busy Board of Ed meeting. <laughs> we should pack it with people that are like asking for like my autograph. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna elect you. Oh my god. <laughs> they make like ridiculous motions whenever they have like a QA section. <laughs> so, fours. <laughs> Motion to serve apple pies every day at 10 o'clock. What? <laughs> Why would we do that? <laughs> Motion to release pigeons in the in the gym. Yeah. Yes. Oh, we used to get birds in the gym. That was my favorite. They would just fly around <laughs> trying to fly out oh, the windows God. that weren't open. It's like the most exciting thing. We're and gonna then do. Russ, the janitor, would eventually have to retrieve the corpse. <laughs> uh, oh, I think uh, they eventually get out, don't they? Yeah. No. Because fine. Russ throws him in a dumpster. <laughs> Fucking Russ. He was the best. There was Russ and Malcolm, and I've always thought of writing a show about two fucking high school, uh, two gr uh, grade school janitors, because I just think it's like, you're, it's like the most celebrated job in the world, because everybody loves when the janitor comes. No matter what they're doing, all the kids are so happy. They're like, hey, Russ, what's yeah, going yeah, on? That's right. Like, they're just so fucking that's thrilled. Hey, true. Malcolm, how's it going? That's right. We were just always so excited. It's like, oh, just, uh, just mopping up puke here. Oh, have a good day. <laughs> like, we were just so thrilled. It's like, oh, another person. He's kind of like us. In high school, sometimes they get you cigarettes. Yeah, or yeah. Booze or help you sneak out at lunchtime mm -hmm. or sneak back in. No, the janitors of schools are very well-loved people. Few See, bucks. here's the thing. The older you get, the cooler the janitor was. Like, back in the day, it was like, a, Santa's name was like a hot chick. She's like, oh, fuck me while I mop. <laughs> She's just like spreading it. Then in your day, it's like a dude they learned. But it's like, yeah, yeah, we'll help you sneak out. We'll buy you some smokes. In my day, it wasn't like that. It was no. just like, oh, yeah, we're just cleaning up this puke here. It's fucking Igor. Well, they let you in back in the oh, school sometimes oh if you, like, left something. Yeah. Uh, but that was the extent of it. They didn't buy us drugs. No? Or let us fucking have our way with them sexually. No. <laughs> I want to see this hot janitor we're talking about. Back in the day. Oh, my God. Janitors and stewardesses. All of them. So smoking hot. <laughs> oh, fuck you. What's going on over there? Oh, it keeps binging. Bingers? People, people keep messaging me. I don't care about their <laughs> thoughts. We're not talking about the show, so fuck them. <laughs> Who's your uh, your asshole or uh, hero of the week, gentlemen? Do we have one? My asshole of the week who's, who was whoever served me a fucking Dunkin' Donuts sandwich that put me out of commission for the last couple of days with oh. a terrible fever because I think I got fucking food poisoning oh. at the Dunkin' Donuts in Bud Lake. So fuck that. Oh, I actually have two. The other one is all the people that were blocking the ambulance going down 31st Street, probably to a fucking emergency. Get your cars out of the way. I know there's nowhere to pull over, but the guy in front's got to figure it out. Just let people block. Oh, fuck. This guy was blaring his fucking siren. I thought I was going to have, like, fucking hearing They got to figure out how to do that thing from uh, Back to the Future 2, uh -huh. where the car's just like, we're, we're going, we don't need <laughs> Nice. Fucking yeah. <laughs> Inspector Gadget, that motherfucker. <laughs> yeah. Inspector Gadget. Just fly yes. over the yes. city. Enough with the ambulances. Yeah, really. You know what? Enough with the emergencies. If you're having an emergency, just die. <laughs> That's what you say. It's a lot of your hero of the week. Well, actually, I am kind of an asshole of the week this week. Uh, kind of? Kind of, well, let's see. You got one or you don't got I one? I do have one. All right, good. Be positive. I am positive. I'm... 
Anyway, I decided to go get empanadas. Empanadas? This last week. Delicious. Well, I went to the place and I heard the empanadas were really good. Okay. Uh, I wanted four beef empanadas uh-huh. and two chicken empanadas. Gotcha. Okay, so I no problem. So about five minutes later, she walks back to me and she says, we only have enough for two beef enchiladas. Can you do two beef enchiladas and four chicken enchiladas? I thought they were empanadas. Em- I'm sorry, empanadas. Empanadas, yes, yes. You yeah, the whole enchilada. That's right. Okay, fine. That's fine. So I bring them home. I'm like, okay, great. The ones that are beef are marked beef. Well, there was one beef and one chicken, so they gave me five chicken empanadas and one beef empanada. And they sucked. They were not very good. Huh. I'm like, why did I do this to myself? I'm eating food I don't want. So half of them are still, the chicken ones, other chicken ones are still in the fridge in a bag. They may never get eaten. I don't know what's going to happen. I was like, never again. An empanada waste. An empanada waste. I don't know how much everybody counts as far as being an asshole of the week. But call them out. What's the name of the restaurant? I'm not going to call the place out. Oh, wow. Look at you. I'm not going to do that. I called out the Dunkin' Donuts and Bud Lake. Okay, Minia, Fuck them. Minia's Kitchen. I was dead. I was dead fucking two days. Right. I woke up and just a pile of sweat in the middle of the bed and I moved over, fell back asleep. Then that side, I had to change the sheets in the middle of the night. Woke up the next day and didn't have a temperature anymore. I must have sweated out. Wow. That shit was crazy, though. I have a fever. A fever. <laughs> the only prescription. <laughs> it's more cowbell. No, just don't eat fucking Dunkin' Donuts. What, what stupid shit did you have at Dunkin' Donuts? I had the, the what is that, the near sausage sandwich? They oh, the Beyond possible. Sausage? Beyond one? Sausage Sandwich. Beyond. Fuck you for eating that. Well, Beyond yeah, Sausage. Now. That's what you get, is Beyond fucking sick. You think the regular sausage isn't going to get you sick? Yeah, I eat the fucking thing as a Texas toast and the bacon and the bullshit. Yeah, I don't have problems with those. I eat that thing yeah. fucking... I Actually, I haven't had it in, like, months, but I used to eat it Yeah, I can time. tell because your skin's cleared up. You usually look like a fucking Star Trek villain by now. No, I don't. No, my, my skin's cleared up because of my medication. Oh, that's good, too. Which has been uh, horribly, horribly depressing. Has it been depressing? It's like, um... Yeah, like I feel good, like I can move mm-hmm. around and shit again. That's good. But, um, oh my god, I just have this depression, like... It makes you depressed. Like, it's a good thing I have no ammo. I just oh my god! Oh, oh, fucking wow. sitting here deer hunting, like, oh my god, it's... Maybe they need to reconnoiter the dosage. You know what? No, it's... I feel like, um... <laughs> I feel like I'm in control of okay. like my my thoughts, like Professor X, <laughs> uh, you know. But like I I do, I'm like super fucking, just like I don't know, fucking out of it, like in a funk and like. Yeah. But I realize that I'm like fuck this, so I'm like I'm not gonna fucking sit here and fucking be like sad. Like mm-hmm. I'll fucking play guitar, I'll fucking sing, I'll do whatever. Like I'll right. do whatever else to fucking not fall out for. Oh boy, I love roaming the wasteland. Um, I don't know. I would say my asshole of the week is. Uh, it's also my hero of the week. It's the same person. Okay. Um, and it's the person who shot me with uh, paintballs one Halloween. <laughs> uh, <laughs> That's the story. <laughs> yeah, it's tell us the story. Yeah, it's so I one Halloween I was uh, with this feminist that I was dating and mm-hmm. this uh, this hot girl that was wearing like a white thing like she was dressing white I don't know what she was okay the ice queen um, feminist and the ice queen yeah the feminist I don't know what the hell she, I don't remember what bullshit she was I was dressed um, as feminist? a target I mean the crow. <laughs> uh, so, some uh, you're fucking milking that. Huh? Some kids oh. drew. Oh my god, yeah! I used to get so much pussy because I would dress like mm-hmm. the crow. I wore yeah. a trench coat all the time. <laughs> yeah, can't rain all the time. Uh-huh. Uh, so I, uh, I were walking and I hear a sound. So, I'm like, oh, that's a weird. I think that was a paintball sound. So I'm kind of like, uh, I'll just hide behind these broads and then. Um, the, the feminist took one, and then the hot chick took one. It was like a, an orange blotch, like a green blotch. <laughs> nice. And, uh, and I hear uh, a voice, Happy Halloween, motherfuckers! <laughs> <laughs> and, um, that's a great line. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> 
and it was the, but the, I found out from the person uh, that was laying next to me in bed, because uh, that's who knew the trigger man, my lover. Uh, I found out um, that I was the target because I was dressed like the crow. But I was just smart enough to hide behind. <laughs> Big titty lady. Good. Use so, women as human shields. You're a real yeah. guy. Yeah. yeah, it wasn't a real guy. Fuck him. Uh, for Board of Education, it wasn't a real guy. Fuck him. I'm Paul Ball. I'm running for Board of Education. And, this and I approve this message. This is the demon you've created. <laughs> The monster you've created. <laughs> this campaign paid for by Paul Ball for Board of Education. Directed by Philip Perry. <laughs> Supported by your local Satanist group. <laughs> and on that note, and on that note, <laughs> I think we'll get out of here. Nice. Love you guys. Right. Santos, thank you for short notice. No problem. Coming thank by you, you for having me. Man. Anytime, brother. Lovely and talented. I won't introduce him again. <laughs> We hope you enjoyed our presentation of Cult of Contempt podcast. If you have any questions or comments or want to hear your band on the show, just write us at Cult of Contempt podcast at gmail.com. If you'd like to see back episodes of the show, youtube.com backslash plan 10 studios, cult of contempt.org, or right here on Facebook, Cult of Contempt Network. Even check us out on Instagram at Cult of Contempt podcast. You want to reach Paul? It's at Paul Mauld on Twitter and Instagram and Paul of the Living Dead on Facebook.com. Phil Perry, the writer on Instagram and his Facebook fan page at Phil Perry, the writer. I'm Jim Cook at Jim Cook on Facebook or Jim Cook voice actor on Facebook. You want to get a hold of me directly, jcookvoice at yahoo.com. On behalf of Paul and Phil, I want to thank you for listening. We'll see you next week at 815. I'm Jim Cook. Transmission out. Stand by for contact. We hope you enjoyed our presentation of Cult of Contempt podcast. If you have any questions or comments or want to hear your band on the show, just write us at Cult of Contempt podcast at gmail.com. If you'd like to see back episodes of the show, youtube.com backslash plan 10 studios, cult of contempt.org. Or right here on Facebook, Cult of Content Network. Even check us out on Instagram at Cult of Content Podcast. You want to reach Paul? It's at Paul Mauld on Twitter and Instagram, and Paul of the Living Dead on Facebook.com. Phil Perry, the writer, on Instagram, and his Facebook fan page at Phil Perry, the writer. I'm Jim Cook at Jim Cook on Facebook or Jim Cook Voice Actor on Facebook. You want to get a hold of me directly, jcookvoice at yahoo.com. On behalf of Paul and Phil, I want to thank you for listening. We'll see you next week at 8.15. I'm Jim Cook. Transmission out. Stand by for contact. We hope you enjoyed our presentation of Cult of Contempt podcast. If you have any questions or comments or want to hear your band on the show, just write us at Cult of Contempt Podcast at gmail.com. If you'd like to see back episodes of the show, youtube.com backslash plan 10 studios, cult of contempt.org, or right here on Facebook, Cult of Contempt Network. Even check us out on Instagram at Cult of Contempt Podcast. You want to reach Paul? It's at Paul Mauld on Twitter and Instagram, and Paul of the Living Dead on Facebook.com. Phil Perry, the writer, on Instagram and his Facebook fan page at Phil Perry, the writer. I'm Jim Cook at Jim Cook on Facebook or Jim Cook Voice Actor on Facebook. You want to get a hold of me directly, jcookvoice at yahoo.com. On behalf of Paul and Phil, I want to thank you for listening. We'll see you next week at 815. I'm Jim Cook. Transmission out. Stand by for contact.